Welcome to this video tutorial on horn maintenance. My name is James Bolden. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Louisiana at Monroe. Today's topic will be how to disassemble and reassemble uh, rotary valves on the French horn. Okay. Disassembling and reassembling rotary valves. Now, there's no reason to be scared, uh, although this is something that does seem to uh, intimidate a lot of horn players, and uh, not without good reason, but it is something that I think most advanced players should, should be at least familiar with. Now, if you're not interested in, in doing this, that's perfectly fine, but this video is to uh, for informational purposes should you be interested in this sort of procedure. Um, I highly recommend learning from a qualified repair technician. Uh, I learned from a, a, our repair person in graduate school, so I, I feel pretty confident in, in disassembling and reassembling a rotary valve. There's a couple of different tools that you need. A small hammer, um, a rawhide mallet is actually very good for that sort of thing. Rawhide mallets can be used for all sorts of uh, various repairs uh, and things like that with brass instruments. The end of, oh, I'd say this is three quarters of an inch, an inch diameter uh, dowel with a small hole drilled in the end. Uh, if you don't have one of those or the, the access to uh, something to make that, you can use the end of a piece of PVC pipe. This is going to be used to tap the valve back into place at the end. Pres uh, a screwdriver with varying sizes in flat head, just like you did for the restringing of the valves. A small metal punch. Uh, this is sort of an optional one, and we'll talk about why that's optional a little bit later. Valve oil. And, of course, replacement string to replace the string on the valve once it has been reassembled. And the last bit of uh, material you need is an old towel or some sort of cushion, and we're going to explain why this is necessary in just a little bit. So once you have all of your tools assembled, let's go. Get these out of the way. Step one is remove the string. And this was covered in an earlier video. I'm going to remove the string from the valve by loosening the valve lever screw, the screw at the end, and the stop arm screw. Now, there's no need to remove those. Loosen them to where the, the string comes undone, just like that throw that string away or set it aside. Now what I like to do is to snug these screws back up. You'll have to loosen them again when you restring the valve, but by snugging them up, it prevents them from coming loose and potentially being lost. Okay. The next step is to remove the center screw from the rotor shaft, and you're probably going to need a slightly bigger bit on your screwdriver. Yep, that fits perfectly. Okay. I'm going to remove that screw. And it shouldn't be super tight. There's no reason to over tighten any of these screws. Remove that and set it aside. Now, what I like to do is to make little piles. If you're going to disassemble all of the valves, say for cleaning or something like that, uh, you don't want any of these parts to get mixed up. So I suggest making a little pile for valve one, valve two, so on and so forth. Um, I even use little labeled plastic cups, labeled one through four, and that way I can keep all of the parts together. Okay, step two remove the valve cap, just like that. Set it aside. Flip the horn back over. Now, the next step, it's a little, little tricky, is to remove the stop arm. Now, you need a screwdriver head that's thin enough to fit between the stop arm and the rotor shaft. And you see how I just popped it up just like that. I'll show you again. It goes in between and just twist it, okay? and that pops it right up. Pull that and set it aside. Now, if for some reason it's a horn that has not been, uh, had the valves disassembled in a long time, or you can't find a screwdriver thin enough, or you can't get enough torque to twist that up, there is another method. Um, I, I'm not a huge proponent of the method because it does involve tapping a little bit, uh, but what you can do is you can tap this 
okay, you can take a small metal punch and tap in that center hole, and that will cause the valve to drop out. Now, if you're going to do that, if this stop arm is struck, uh, stuck, you want to place the towel underneath the horn, just like this, so that the valve doesn't come out and hit the table or the floor or anything like that and start rolling. Uh, now, that's not a preferred method, and in fact, uh, if you're not confident doing that, I would recommend taking it to a repair person. It's, it's rare that that has happened to me. I've all, almost always been able to find a screwdriver and get it in there and just pop that uh, stop arm right off. So set that aside in your pile for valve one. Now, you're ready to remove the valve. That's not so bad, is it? So, uh, you're going to take your small hammer, okay, and you're going to tap as directly down as you can on this valve, just like that, okay? doesn't have to be hard. Uh, the, the valve will pop right out, and if you've got your towel underneath, that's going to catch the valve, just like so. Ah, there we have it. The valve dropped right out. So, we're done with the body of the horn for now. I can set that aside. I can show you a couple of things on the valve. Now, this is what a rotary valve looks like for those of you who haven't, who haven't seen one before. This is the bearing plate. You've got rotor shafts on either end, bearing here and bearing here. This is how the valve moves when it's in the valve casing. The only points of friction are at the top and bottom. Okay? The valve face should move cleanly within the valve casing. And you see all this green? That's corrosion. That's the stuff that gets removed when you have your instrument chemically cleaned or ultrasonically cleaned, which I also recommend doing. Um, now, if you're going to remove these valves for uh, the purposes of bathing your instrument or something like that, go ahead and set them aside, put them in, a, in, a, in your plastic cups. Now, what you can do if you don't have access to uh, a way to have your instrument professionally cleaned is you can put these in ordinary household vinegar overnight, and the, the mild acid of the household vinegar will dissolve and break down some of this corrosion on here. It won't, it won't get it nearly as clean as a professional cleaning would, but it's better than nothing. So you have the bearing plate, you have the valve, you have the bearings at the top and the bottom, and the rotor shaft at the bottom. Uh, now we're ready to reassemble the valve. Now if you're planning on cleaning the instrument, of course you would take all of these valves out and keep them organized. That way you can run a snake down the slide tube and into the valve casing. You can take a brush and get it down in there and get out gunk that you never thought you could get out before. Um, now, if you do that regularly, I'd say, you know, every six months or something like that, the, the, the corrosion will not become built up to the point where it interferes with the valve. Okay, so we want to reassemble the valve. That should obviously be an important goal once the valve has been disassembled. Take the rotor, like so, and just apply a thin coating of oil, okay, over the face of it. There's no need to douse it really heavily, but get, get most of the parts nice and oiled. Okay? Put some oil down the valve casing. Okay? Near the bottom there. You want to make sure that any points of friction are not going to stick. Okay? Put the rotor back into the casing. Now it should turn freely. There shouldn't be uh, much resistance, if any. It should turn very freely. What you can do if there's problems is a little more oil. Now, obviously, you don't want to get any gunk or grit or pieces of dust or hair or anything like that between the valve and the valve casing. That's only going to cause you more problems. You're going to have to disassemble the valve again, wash it, clean it off, dry it thoroughly, and then re-oil it. So I'm just adding a little bit more oil here and there to get it to turn very freely. Okay.